Grandma's 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 Grandma's
just before the first visitors arrived, I had turned the oven on because I was hoping that I'd get them all cooked before they all came, which I didn't. The house was full of smoke. Yes, I, the baker, just the, 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 that butter that melted out was now burning off in the oven. We had the doors open and the windows open. So the oat cakes didn't get done for the first visitors, but we got it all tidied up. Mitchell helped and <laughs> we, we got the oven cleaned out. But those things happen to normal people and I'm just a normal person. I'm not a chef, I'm not a pastry chef. And we've certainly had a lovely visit with, with our, our little chef uh, who, who came here, Anne-Marie Woodgate, and I loved her. But so anyway, that's the long and the short of it. But today, I promise you, I will not do that to the crust. And uh, that's why in the tart pan that I used that I couldn't go up the side because I didn't have enough of the, the gluten-free because uh, Mitchell's wife, Laura, needed to have a gluten-free uh, dessert. And I wanted to make sure that that's happening. So anyway, hi, hi, all over again. And it's great to see you all. And thank you for joining in. And um, I'm playing my favorite CD. I'm playing my Spalchich CD from the Celtic Music Interpretive Center. Oh, somebody made the five layer de lemon dessert. Isn't that great? That is Mitchell's mother-in-law's recipe. And I don't know where she got it. She doesn't claim... Uh, uh, you know, you know, ownership of it in any way. So it's Charlene Chesson over there in Reserve Mines, but uh, she makes uh, beautiful desserts, and that's just one of them. And uh, we, it's now become a favorite of ours as well. Hi from Ottawa, Michelle Wallace, and uh, Barbara Dice. Hi from Arthur, Ontario, and the cookbook. More on that later. I better stop talking and let's make this dessert because it is the easiest dessert. I wanted to say, you know, some lovely person, I, I won't bother mentioning that, but sent me a gift certificate to the bulk burn. So what do you do when you get a, a gift certificate? I love to get something that I wouldn't, wouldn't go out and spend the money on myself. So last, year last fall whenever I, I got it I um, I went into the bulk burn and I found tart pans so I got two tart pans an 11 inch one and a 9 inch one so this is my my 9 inch tart pan that I'm going to be using today and uh, takes a little getting used to with you can't hold it and or the bottom will come up but uh, you just have to hold it by the edges but it's just so nice but that doesn't mean that you cannot make today's dessert. I'm going to be making it in the tart pan because that's the reason I bought it. I just wanted to try that out. So today's recipe is uh, made with limes. And I wanted to make a key lime pie one time, but this is basically a key lime pie. Only we're not using key limes. We're just using regular limes. Uh, when you live in a, in a small place like I live it's very hard to get key limes and they're they're much littler than this and I think they might be a little sweeter perhaps I really don't know the 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 ins and outs of that but I'm just using regular limes but basically the the content is the same as a key lime pie so we can say we're making key lime pie today or we're making a, a lime tart because they're not key limes and you can use you can use a nine inch um, uh, spring form pan for this. And if you have a, if it's if yours is nonstick, so you don't need to do anything. Uh, you know you don't have to prep it in any way, shape, or form. Uh, and my tart pan is is uh, you know it's just beautifully nonstick, and I love that. So I don't have to do anything with it. Or you can use like a Pyrex uh, pie plate, a, a metal tin one that's that's nonstick, or or a, a, a glass one, and it's all the same. Okay, so we can all use that. And uh, how are you from Hamilton, Ontario? Missed your name, so I'll try to keep watching today. Hello, Gail. Yes. Those, I don't remember how much those tart pans were, but they weren't very expensive. I haven't used the 11 inch one yet. That's pretty big. 
but I'll, I'll give it a try. You know, maybe just double a recipe. I'm not sure. Hello, Odette. And um, so I have everything ready here to go. I have my oven set at 325. I've posted the recipe on Facebook, and uh, but I forgot to put it on my website, but I will put it on there after the show. But it is on uh, Facebook, so you should be able to do that. So, I'm gonna wash my hands, set your oven to 325 if you're baking with me today, okay? I'll be right back. Here now, here you go. Hi, Tracy McGuire, Janine McMillan, hello from Brantford. Donna McNeil, hello from Judic. <laughs> Oh, somebody can't wait to see me next summer. I can't wait to see everybody I can get my hands on. <laughs> Serious. It's just awesome, isn't it? Hi, Nancy Adams. Aw, thank you. You make my Sundays too. And there's about four more weeks of, of the horse races. So Cecil's occupied every Sunday afternoon. So I'm keeping him happy and he's not worried about leaving me here in the kitchen all by myself. <laughs> I promise you next Sunday we're going to have entertainment. We're going to have, uh, who's next? Uh, Mike Hall is next Sunday. And uh, and the Sunday after that, I'm having a, a lovely caterer, Judic. Um, Sharon Nicholson McCachran is going to be here. And uh, we don't know yet what she'll be making, but she's a caterer and you can, oh, she's just wonderful. So she's gonna come and, and bake with me and I love that. And she's just in the next village over. And the next Sunday is my uh, recipe uh, book launch here in Port Hood. It's just gonna be very casual. The cookbooks are gonna be for sale there and I'll be signing them. The kids are gonna be singing. Margie and Don are gonna be playing. Very casual and, you know, people in and out and, uh, you know, it'll be a nice afternoon. And um, um, maybe, uh, uh, you know, the kids might be around the following day. We'll be going live from there as well. And, and also, just on, on the cookbooks, um, I know that our local co-op has ordered a bunch of copies, so there's always going to be copies there and at the Judic Interpretive Center as well. Anyway, more on that later. Let's get going. You know me, I'm talking. <laughs> okay. Hello, hello, Linda. Hi, Jesse McKinnon, how are you? Okay. So I'm gonna put this down and you can see this. I have a little bit of setup, different setup today because I moved my table around a little bit. Used to be, okay. There now. So uh, I have my recipe right here. So we're going to make the crust, and it's one and a half uh, or one and a quarter cup of graham crumbs. So let's start with that. Put the quarter one in there, and one. Now, there's people out there that may not like uh, graham crumbs. You make whatever crust you want that you uh, would rather. You can make a little, maybe a little shortbread base, I'm not sure. But this is this recipe. This is what you're getting today from me, okay? And uh, into that we're going to put three tablespoons of white sugar. One, two, and three. I'm just gonna mix that a little bit. And into that, you're going to put a quarter cup of ground almonds. 
or really you could use whatever nuts that uh, that you have. I couldn't get uh, ground almonds, so my, mine are natural almonds and they're sliced. So I'm just gonna pour a quarter cup in the measuring cup and I am going to um, grind them down with this little thing. This has been the easiest recipe, I swear, I think I've ever made. It's grand. And into this, uh, we're going to put five tablespoons of melted butter. Now this is a, just a two tablespoon measure, and I'm going to do that. So that's two tablespoons. That's four, and one more. Okay, I'm just gonna throw that in the microwave for like 10 or 15 seconds. So that took, really, that took exactly 15 seconds, all right? So I'm just gonna just combine that together. Get in there with your hands and just that there's no dry crumb residue there. It's perfect. See, that's grand. Okay. Now put this in your tart pan. And really just bring it up to the sides I just love this little pan just looks so pretty when I was making the the, the gluten-free crust the one that I pictured on uh, to tell you what we're making I, I didn't have enough to go up the sides, which is the whole point of a tart pan. Now I am going to, hold on a second. I'm just gonna use a, a glass and it'll kind of get it up on the sides too. It's good to kind of get it in there kind of firmly on the bottom. Nothing worse than a Graham wafer bottom, just being very messy. Now, I'm just gonna go around and squish it up against the side. Is squish even a word? I don't know. <laughs> And 
I mean, we're not looking for perfection. We're just ordinary darlings. I think that's good. There. So if you have a tart pan, you grab it by the sides. Okay? It smells really good. And you know, if, if you have a, a nut allergy, and that was the other reason why I didn't put the nuts in um, on Tuesday night. And that could have made the difference too while the butter escaped in the oven because Aiden was coming as well and I didn't want to have that like in the house. And, uh, but um, this looks so nice. Hello, Kathy Wilson. <laughs> okay, in the oven, 325, 15 minutes. Is that what it says? 10, 15 minutes, yep. Oh, Deborah Lahi, I ordered from Indigo and it should be here on September 22nd. Isn't this so crazy? I wouldn't be able to do this without you guys. I'm, I, I just shake my head that, the, that I'm gonna have a cookbook. <laughs> I can't believe that. It's awesome. So anyway, so I, I don't know about the sold out things. I do, what I do know this, and this number absolutely scares me, but our, uh, the publisher, uh, McIntyre Purcell from Lunenburg, I know that they ordered a few thousand books. And just to explain the whole September 1st, how it was, it was explained to me, is that um, when, when a publisher is putting a book out there, they have to give an approximate date that they think that it will be on the market. And of course that, that had to be guessed at back in June when they sent it off when it was completed and it go, goes to uh, the, the printers and then it comes back and it goes to the, the company that uh, distributes it and all of that. So September 1st was the date and um, I know that there's people who have gotten a cookbook that ordered early. I don't have a cookbook yet. I don't even, I haven't seen the finished copy yet, but it's on its way to me because the, the distributor has, has sent me. I'm not selling the books myself, but the books that I am getting are the ones that I have uh, sent for, who are for me and our children, our grandchildren and my siblings. So, uh, and for a couple of the people that were involved with the book and uh, that I owe them uh, for their help. So, um, no, I haven't gotten it myself yet, so I'm all excited about that. And for those who are on Amazon, I went on there and I looked and I saw that, that message that people were telling me about. Um, I really have no control over that. And... Um, they're out of stock is because I guess they ordered some in and they, they those first few people who got their name in, uh, uh, they sold out really quickly. But I know that Amazon have, an order is on its way to Amazon um, as of a few days ago. So I'm pretty sure that they'll have that this coming week and they will be able to fill the orders. Um, so, so don't give up if wherever you are. But if you're local, support local. Please support local. Our local co-op. I'm so proud of them. They, they, they've ordered a bunch of books in. And our local gift shop at the Clove Hitch Restaurant and the Four Mermaids Gift Shop, they ordered uh, some in as well. There's um, a shop in Antigua Nish that has ordered. It's a new. Uh, maybe bookstore and oh I can't remember the name 
no I, I was gonna say the curiosity shop but it's not that it's something else but anyway uh, if you're in for Maniganish and you know of this little new business that's opened up lately uh, they've ordered some I know Indigo, Indigo, or is it Coles? Whatever that store is in the mall. I think it's Indigo Spirit or whatever at the mall in Sydney. They've ordered them, and uh, there's a girl that works there. Her name is Margie, and she is formerly from Port Hood. I was talking to her on the phone, and they were ordering some. So anybody over in Sydney, and I really don't know. I I had had to give names of places that might be interested in in, in carrying the book. And uh, so I gave the Gaelic College gift shop, I gave them their phone number and they, they were interested and the gift shops in Inverness. And so, so anyway, there's lots of books and anybody who wants one, you will get one and there'll be some for sale on the day of the launch as well. So we're all good. The Curious Cat, there you go. That's the name of the, uh, the shop in Antigonish and lovely lady I was talking to or girl. The, the, all these voices sound so young. So um, anyway, uh, that's what's happening with the cookbook. I just, I can't, I'm just, I'm, I shake my head. I'm so excited about this. Darlene DePaz, hi Mary Jan, love your show. You're a true, aw, St. John, New Brunswick, hello there. Jar, okay, there now. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna get to the filling now. So, um, this is going to be in the oven for, like I said, 15 minutes. When it comes out, we have to put it uh, just maybe 10 minutes. It's fine, if, as long as it's not hot, hot. Oh, and another thing, um, when the filling is cooked and you're going to put it in the fridge, it needs to be in the refrigerator for uh, at least two hours. So this uh, last night, I made one so that we could put the topping on. And uh, Sandy travels, they probably can. So um, here's, here's the one I made last night. I don't know if you can see all those rugged edges. <laughs> there we go. Oh my gosh, I love citrus. And this, this is what this is. Uh, thank you, Louise Monet. That's wonderful. So we're going to be decorating this with the topping, with the whipped cream topping. This one, because it, it was baked last night and I'm going to have it for tea. So there now. I'll put the cover back on that. So let's mix up the filling uh, while there is still nine minutes left. So we have lots of time and uh, Hi, Tina. Oh, Darlene, you're coming. Darlene Turple is coming to the launch. That's awesome. And Susan Lundy, I'm gonna be meeting Susan Lundy. She's coming on the Cape Breton tour. That is so exciting. Ronnie and I met the other day and uh, it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be great. Okay, I'm gonna put the camera down. All right, so the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to put four egg yolks in here. So I'm going to, to do that. I'm just going to put the, um, egg whites in there. And I'm going to save those egg whites, um, And you can make scrambled eggs with the egg whites, okay? Okay, 
So this little membrane here is, is called Calizai is the uh, membrane that keeps the yolk in place while it's in the shell, but I really try to get it out if I can. Okay, oh, there's a little piece in there. I got ya. Here we go. Kalezai is is what that's called. I don't know what I said before, but I I remember looking it up one time. I was just interested in finding out. I think that's everything. Okay, there we go. And you're going to put in here the cest of two lines. Making a mess. All right. Okay. So I, I know all of you know, you, you wash your, your citrus before you, you do any cesting. Uh, if, if you're looking for an amount, I am saying probably two teaspoons of cest. And just try to get the surface. Don't get any of the, what is that called anyway? Is it the pith or something? I love that tune. I love that tune that's playing. But anyway, that, don't, don't get that, the pith or whatever that thing is called and the lime. You guys are all smart, you know what it is. You know what I mean. And just so you know, when you when the time comes to do um, the topping, um, you're going to be whipping your whipped cream. I already put my bowl in the freezer with my beaters just so you know, in case you want to do that when when you're making the, the topping. I think that's good enough. And of course, we are going to be using both of these limes to make, um, or to juice. When I got this recipe, I think it said two teaspoons of zest and about a half a cup of the lemon, uh, of the lime juice. And really, I know there's those little plastic lime thingies that have juice in them. Please try to use real, the real lime, the, the, a real lime. The, the taste is, I'm sure, so much better. Now, if, if you're finding the music too loud or anything like that, just let me know when I turn the camera back up where I can see your comments. It sounds fine to me, but sometimes it can be overwhelming. I think that's good enough. two teaspoons. Do you see that? That's it, you know? And I mean, you can be approximate with these things. Oh, gosh, it smells good. If you love lemon, oh, you know, of course you're going to love lime. Okay, so you at this point can whisk and whisk that with just a regular uh, uh, kitchen whisk, but I am going to use my beater, my beater has 
has a, a whisk attached to it. Doesn't have two, it just comes with one. So I'm going to do this until it's the yolks are lighter in color, okay? And, okay. We're going to add uh, a can of Eagle Brand milk or sweetened condensed milk if we're not using brand names. Okay, the crust is done. Let me go get that crust. You can see it's toasty brown. Sue Scarborough! Oh! I wish I had stopped by East Street. <laughs> there now. So we're just gonna put that aside. I set the timer for 10 minutes. I'm gonna put it on my cooling rack, okay? Okay, I'm gonna give this a little mix. All right, so it's nice and fluffy, and we're gonna add some lime juice to that. So these little bowls have measure measures on it. So right about there is the half cup measure. So I am going to juice into that, and we'll see how much juice that we get but I don't think it's going to be a half a cup, okay? And I forgot to get... a knife and a cutting board. So...
so it's just a little shy of a half a cup. So I am going to pour it in here. And I'm not gonna use the beater. I'm just gonna slowly whisk this in just because I know me, it'll probably be splattering all over the place. There now, that's nicely mixed together. That's it, folks. That is the filling. And it's really, well, could you be made with lemons and tit? I don't see why it couldn't be made with lemons. You know, why not? And, uh, I bet you it would be delicious with lemons too. Yeah. So that, that's it to the filling. And basically, key lime pie. That's, that's most of the recipes that I've looked through for key lime pie because I wanted to make it a while ago, since a long time. And basically, it's the same, the same recipe exactly. So I'm just waiting now for the crust to cool. Okay? And we have about five more minutes. I'm actually going to just t test that, see how it feels. It's still hot. Okay. Okay, so I see some people have ordered from Indigo. God love you, thank you. So what's in the recipe book? What's in the recipe book, I think, is pretty well most of the recipes up until uh, whenever I had to submit them, May or June or something. And I, uh, then I put some other extra ones that I hadn't made on the show because they wanted some more categories. And I mean, like I've told you before, I'm not a big meal maker. There's certain things that I like and that I make, like my lasagna, my chili, um, you know, my scalloped potatoes, and there's cordon bleu chicken in there. There's the, you know, well, the, the stuffed pasta shells. I hadn't made that at the time, but that recipe went in there. There's a few dips. Cecil's chow and beets is in there and the cranberry sauce. Uh, that's pretty much it. And then there's just a little bit of information about me and who I am and Mabu and Port Hood and um, just little things like that, but it's all in one soft cover. I didn't know that it would be soft cover. I thought maybe it would be hard cover, but it's the publisher's choice. It's the publisher's book. And, uh, and I'll get a, a royalty from that, but I'm so excited and I hope that you all enjoy it, anybody who is watching and uh, interested, right? So, what else can we talk about while I'm waiting here? We'll have to sit and have a cup of tea in a minute. And um, Izzy Squares, yes, Izzy, Lizzie. Not Izzy. Lizzie squares are going to be in there. Um, as some of you will remember, dear little Lizzie, just a very young girl and uh, the daughter of dear friends of our daughter, Tammy, and really friends of ours as well because you live in a, in a small town. I was actually at their house today, but they weren't home. I was dropping off something. But... Um, <clears throat> She passed away from a tragic car accident this summer. So it's a, it's a hard time of the year, isn't it? Um, you know, school starting back up and all of those reminders. And it's tough. It's tough for anybody. Uh, but anyway, um, there you go. 
just make those Lizzie squares as often as you can and just picture that little girl whose picture is in there and uh, you'll, you'll be reminded of dear, sweet Lizzie. Um, I was going to say that pretty much fall has begun around here. That awful heat that was on the go, uh, uh, even a, a little more than a week ago, uh, just uh, broke. And somebody just asked about little Russell. Oh my gosh, I was talking to uh, Russell's mom. Russell is, is, is doing as, as best as can be expected. He's living life like a little two-year-old boy and uh, doesn't even realize that there's anything wrong, but he's had multiple, multiple surgeries back and forth to, to the children's office, uh, to children's hospital in Edmonton. And, um, you know, it's, it, one eye, one ear is, is, is the, the, the major uh, issues and one cheek. And, uh, but he's doing great and he's happy and uh, the family got a puppy so that he could be happy with a, with a, with a little dog in his life that was good and kind. And uh, so that, that seems like a long time ago, but it really wasn't that long ago, was it? Okay, there's 10 minutes. I'm going by my timer. <clears throat> So, this is going to go right on top of the crust now, and I'm going to put this down. There we go. So just pour it in. And just spread it out to all the edges. And just give it a little wiggle. Okay. And that's it. And the rest is just garnish, right? Whipped cream or whipped cream, the way we're doing it today. And uh, I, I know you can almost taste it and it is that good. So I'm gonna put it in the oven, 14 minutes exactly, or till it's solid in the middle, but it's, it is solid. At 14 minutes, it's solid. You can just touch it and know that it's solid. So I'm gonna do that. If you're using a tart pan, careful. And of course, that's still at 325, okay? 325 for 14 minutes, okay. So, because I made, because I couldn't wait the two hours for it to go in the fridge, I made another one for you. And somebody's gonna get that whole tart dessert that's in the oven. It won't be in this house. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna use this one. I've got an awful mess going on here. So what I need for this, I'm gonna get my whipping cream, whipping whipped cream out of the fridge and my dish and um, my beaters. So 
the whipping cream is 30, 35% fat, okay? For anybody who might not be from here, wants to know. This uh, beater, it, it, you have to put it in the right one. They're both different, different notches. Okay. So, <clears throat> a half a cup Spoon of sugar. I'm after dirtying my tablespoon measure with the with the um, butter, so I'm just gonna guesstimate at that. And I mean, you don't have to do this particular recipe. You can just use whipped cream with a little bit of vanilla in it, and you can put some icing sugar in there to sweeten it up a little bit and and just just sprinkle the the, the lime rind um, zest over the top okay so we've got the sugar in here and a half a cup of of whipping cream and a nice cold bowl all right see how much mess I'll make of this well I've got a loose connection Hold on, everybody. This extension cord is funny. Folks, I'm gonna have to move to the counter. take you with me I always can you recap the recipe yes I can so the base the base is one and a quarter cup of graham crumbs graham wafer crumbs and uh, three tablespoons of white sugar mix that all together and uh, a quarter cup of ground almonds I used almonds but you can use walnuts or ground pecans or you know some coconut just put in that extra. And then uh, mix that up and add five tablespoons of butter that is melted and put that in a nonstick um, tart pan or pie pan or spring form pan or square pan for that matter. It doesn't matter however you want your finished product to look, but I'm using a tart pan. And you mix that all up, you put it in there, you get it in there nice and tight, and you bake it in a 325 oven for uh, 15 minutes. And then you let it cool for 10 minutes before adding the filling. The filling is four egg yolks and uh, the zest of two limes. And you whisk that up really well with either a beater or your whisk. And, um, then you add a can of sweetened condensed milk or Eagle Brand milk. Uh, everybody calls it Eagle Brand milk. No matter what brand you buy, it's all the same. Uh, this week I used my compliments or compliments what brand. So you use a can of Eagle Brand milk and then you whisk that really well with the beater as well. And then uh, you um, juice the two limes that you zested and you get about a half a cup of juice and mix that up nicely, slowly with, with a regular whisk until it all comes together. Pour it in the base and put it in the oven at 325 for 14 minutes. And then uh, now, I was flinching. I thought when she plugged in the mixer, the beaters would sling the cream everywhere. <laughs> well, that could happen to me. Anything's possible in my kitchen. Okay, 
I had the foresight to turn it off, so. And maybe it's the beater. <laughs> maybe it's the beater. Who knows? Maybe it's not gonna work. So, here we go, folks. You'll witness my failure. <laughs> Judith Ann is watching from the road in Quebec. All right. Nicely done. All right. Okay. Back to the table. So into this, we're going to fold in um, a half a cup of sour cream, if you want to do yours that way. i just not getting a good enough angle on this. Can you see that? Do you have any idea how hard this is to get this camera? <laughs> Fixed. <laughs> Somebody likes the beaters. So, a half a cup of sour cream. Oh my God, there's no calories. There's just no calories. Now this is a half cup measure that I'm using. Of course, everything I'm using I think is Pamper Chef. Now, where's my recipe? It's the zest of, uh, of the lime. Now you can put the zest right in this. We're gonna, we're gonna fold this in in a second, um, the sour cream. But um, I am, I'm actually going to put the zest right in, in here. And um, it's, it'll be good. I see somebody said, I need a GoPro. What a great idea. Margie has a GoPro. Our daughter Margie is traveling across Canada, driving, and she was driving from Thunder Bay to I'm not sure just where she is. I think she's close to Sault Ste. Marie or something and on her way to the Windsor area to spend some time with one of our grandsons. And uh, she had a terrible, terrible scare. Two moose, came, rounded a corner and two moose on the road. Very, very terrifying. She was really shook up. So, Anyway, anybody who's driving you, and, and has encountered, I know Newfoundland has a, had a lot of moose encounters over there, but let's hope she gets home safely. Margie loves photography, so she's taking her time and going to lots of places. 
and taking pictures. Okay, so now I am going to just fold this, fold the sour cream into the whipped cream. Just like that, not very much, just a little bit. And again, you can do whatever you want. If you want to use lemons, I'm sure that's fine. I'm just going to use this. This is, of course, a Pamper Chef decorator. And uh, let's hope this doesn't fall out the bottom. This is how, I just have a little star tip. But you, you can just spread it all over the top if you like. But you wouldn't put this, I don't think you'd put this on until you're ready to serve. So let it be in the freezer. Or not the freezer. Sorry people, I didn't mean that. I say things that I don't mean sometimes. I'm saying, why did I say that? Anyway. Okay. I, I am not a decorator, not even a little bit. So it is what it is. So let's let's watch this. And just use whatever piping bag you have, a milk bag, a Ziploc bag. See if this, how this will go. I'm just gonna put a few blobs here and there. put one in the middle <laughs> and I have some raspberries which I forgot to take out of the fridge let me go get them and actually I'm, I'm going to get that out of the oven because there was just the the timer went that there's a minute left so let's let's check this out together There it is. And it is solid in the center. I'm gonna put it down on this cooling rack. And I'm gonna show it to you so you know what I mean if you bake this yourself. Let's see. Nope, that's too bright. So basically, there's just, it's, it's pretty solid. And the beauty, the beauty of the tart pan is that the bottom just lifts when, when, when you want to put, put it in the fridge, let it, let it just rest here for a little while on, on your cooling rack and then then you can just push up on the bottom and the whole thing comes out and, and just leave that little disc on the bottom. If you have a tart pan and just rest it there and then just put it somewhere in your fridge where nothing else can touch it and um, just leave it there for at least two hours until it's cold enough that you can add your, your whipped cream garnish. And uh, I'm going to turn the kettle on because we're going to have tea. And I, I am going to go get the, the raspberries. And you know what I was thinking on this recipe? For anybody who's not made it, 
I, I think it would be delicious with it, like a ginger snap base. I just, I, I was tasting that when, when I was tasting the, the one we made the other night, and I was thinking, oh, it's almost almost like the, the ginger snap crackle on, on with the gluten-free crust that didn't have the nuts in it or anything like that. And I'm saying that, that would be a really nice flavor to go with the lime or the lemon, whatever you're using. It is, Linda. It's a lovely dessert, and it's so simple. You know, when I thought of a key lime pie or a lime tart, whatever, I'm thinking, oh, my God, that's too fancy for me. I'm not fancy. But, uh, oh, my God, it's so easy. Just so easy. Let's do this. I'm just going to put some raspberries on. The raspberries, I washed them, and they're lovely. I'm going to put one in the middle of every one of these. That's a bigger one. I'll put it in the middle. There now. Now, I was just thinking, what, um, I had put a couple of lime slices on it. I mean, really, nobody's going to, you can eat the, 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 um, the raspberries, but, um, oh, didn't put the kettle on. Um, but why couldn't we do one of those little twisty lemons? I was going to do it the other day when I was trying to be fancy and I, I didn't, so I'm just going to do this. Let's see. How do you do that? I don't know, something like that. Do a couple of those. Nope, that's too big. Well, that didn't work out so good. See, I told you I wasn't a decorator. But you get the idea. <laughs> okay. Kettle is on. I am going to put the tea on, but I want to show you something first. Judy Brierly, who was visiting me this week, she brought me this lovely tea cup and saucer. And this is the, uh, the flower from, um, it's called the Trillium. It's, I guess it's from the Ontario flower. And this is Royal Albert. How wonderful of that was that. And remember a, a couple of weeks ago, I, I was showing you the maple syrup. Well, that was her mom and dad's maple syrup from Crompton or I shouldn't say anything I don't, that I don't know, but isn't that a nice, I'm having my tea, Judith, if you're on the way back to Ontario, I'm having my tea in your cup today, and I will cherish it, <laughs> okay?
Okay. It's not very often that I make tea with one tea bag in the teapot. But today I have nobody to have tea with me, so I'm too scotchy and I just put one tea bag in there. Ontario Trillium. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Okay, so now I am going to cut this. So I'm going to take you back to my counter. Let's see if I don't ruin this by cutting it. It's not condensed milk, Catherine Chong. It's not condensed milk. It's sweetened condensed milk. I hope you didn't, or it's, you know, it's, it is condensed milk. What am I saying? So it's not carnation milk, that evaporated milk. It's the sweetened condensed milk. And now I messed up on the, um, on what your question was. So this is a 300 ml can of, of a sweetened condensed milk. So it's a little more than a cup, just a little bit more than a cup, right? There's 250 mils in a cup. So another little bit. So uh, hope that is okay. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna bring this over here. ounces. Thank you, Tracy. Okay. So I'm going to cut myself a piece. I'm going to put this on the other side. I'm going to take two raspberries. Thanks for coming for tea and for the lime tart. I wish you were here too, Shauna Holtz. Perry Shirley, Bar Shirley Barkhouse. Well, thank you. I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just so glad that you like me. I don't know. It's, 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 it's always surprising to me. I, I guess I, I have lots to say or something. Okay. Let me see. Okay. See if I can do this. Holy smokes. Sorry, folks. I just have to do this. goodness I see a mess on my stairs it's a gift box that the teacup came in my laundry is up there in that laundry hamper <laughs> and I can see the playpen through the door dear little Asher he's not with us anymore he's gone back home to mom and dad but he um, he'll be two in October and his favorite saying just spontaneously grandma a wavu I love you, and, and I'll say, I love you too. 
and he says, I love you more. <laughs> Aren't grandchildren just the best thing since sliced bread? <sighs> okay, I'm gonna see if my tea is ready and I'll have a cup of tea with you. Oops, I spilled it. It's ready. Do you see the color? Can you see the color of my tea? <laughs> it's a good color. <laughs> okay. My hubby would have loved your lime tart, Sue. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Catherine Chong. Okay, here we go. It's, see that the base stays together? I, uh, Lisa, how long would you leave it on the counter? I'd, I'd leave it a good half an hour, just so that it's you know, just warm to the touch. And in my, in my fridge, I have two drawers and then um, I have another drawer down uh, up above, up above the two bottom drawers. And there's a space about this big under that drawer and that's where I put it so that nothing can fall on it. Say if the grandkids are in and out of the fridge or whatever, and it's the perfect spot. And I just loosely put a thing of foil uh, over it. I don't want it to really touch the top, so we kind of just work the, the foil so that it doesn't really touch it. But, but you could probably do that. I'm just scared that the you know, onion or something else would, would interfere with the taste. Okay. I'm gonna have the taste. The, uh, you can't, mm. I guess you can taste the sour cream a little bit. Depends on what you like yourself. You know, it would just be just fine with just whipped cream and some little bit of icing sugar and some vanilla or whipped cream and just vanilla, that's fine too. Whatever your palate likes, that's what you should do. Okay. Oh my God. I know I say this every time, but this is so delicious. Donna Mae, why the sour cream? Oh, don't ask me. <laughs> That's the recipe. <laughs> How much sugar in the crust? I think it was, was it two tablespoons or three? Three tablespoons white sugar, and I will post that on my website. Okay, three tablespoons of white sugar. Everybody's so good to answer, thank you. I'm gonna have another little bit. Mmm. I'm lucky. Oh, thank you, Gail. I'm happy to share. I was gonna tell you one thing. I hope you guys don't mind. Sometimes I just share things that, you know when you find something that you really, really like and, oh, I found, I don't grease my pan, Jean. I have a non-stick tart pan. So if you have a non-stick tart pan or you have a glass pie plate or you have a, a non-stick spring form pan, you don't grease it. If you have an older one that isn't nonstick, yeah, I'd probably put parchment paper and spray some or butter it. I think I would, to be sure. Well, the gluten-free version is no different than the one that I just did. Just buy the gluten-free graham crumbs. 
That's the, only, that's the only difference. Everything else doesn't have gluten in it. So it's one and a, one and a quarter cup of graham crumbs. Just buy the graham crumbs that are gluten-free. They're in the, the um, natural food section, right? It, it, it's really, really delicious. It is. So anyway, back to my favorite things. I'm, I'm like Oprah. <laughs> but I love perfume. Wait till I have a little sip of tea. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. Two more coming in October, a boy and a girl. Oh, that is awesome. I don't know who you were, but yes, more grandchildren. Hi, Mae Peters. I know, and she used carnation milk. My father used to drink carnation milk out of a glass, I'm told. <laughs> okay, I want, I want to share this with you. I, I know perfumes and all of that stuff. You're not supposed to have scents and all of this stuff. But I, I love um, just a, you know, I, I love uh, like a musky smell. I love um, a bit like a vanilla kind of smell on like lotions. I don't wear perfume, I, but I do love my lotions and whatever. But anyway, I was at the Sobe store in Herring Cove. This is a couple of weeks ago. And I was in the pharmacy department and I was looking for something um, for the lady I was looking after. I was looking for a hair clip or something. And on, you know, the end cap off, off a, the shelving unit, there's an end cap. So on the end cap, there was this display of, uh, of, of skincare products and, and all of these things. And this, this was, there was a display of this brand, Bailey, B-A-I-L-L-Y. The website, is there a website? My God, I don't know. Oh, there is, www.bailey.co. I hope that works. I haven't gone on their website. Anyway, this is all natural perfume. It's a perfume oil. This was about, I think it was $27. And it's right here in, um, it's Bailey Cosmetics, Inc. Upper Hammonds Plains, Nova Scotia. And this is the one I got. Oh my God, it's nice. This is the purple box. I didn't know what each one, there was no tester. Uh, so this one, I guess is called Discover and it's in a purple box and there was different colored boxes for the different brands. It is so nice. And you just put a little dash on, on your wrist or behind your ear and it, every now and again you get a little waft and it's not strong and, uh, but it's all these natural oils so I check them out. Everybody who's in Halifax, I don't know if all the Sobies are going to cover it for, for whoever it is that uh, that uh, is carrying this. But it's vegan. It's cruelty free. It's paraben free. It's something else free. P H T H A L A T E free, and the ingredients are caprylic triglyce something fragrance and oh my god too many th uh, four things that I can't pronounce but anyway it's lovely so I hope you get a chance to check it out if you're from near Herring Cove or whatever so people I hope you have a super awesome week uh, next Sunday I've been dying to try this recipe so I'm gonna be making it this week and if you have a jelly roll pan Jelly roll pan, I don't know what the measurement is, 10 by something, 10 by 15 or something like that. Let me get mine, if you don't mind, hold on. Oh, there's no measure on this, but it's a, it's, it's a jelly roll pan 
Where do I get my measuring tape? by 15 and it's remember back in the fall in October I made a, a pumpkin roll oh my god and that's such a delicious dessert well this is a chocolate roll and inside the roll is um, you know a blend of uh, cream cheese and stuff all that good stuff right no calories and you roll it up and you have some powdered sugar or you can have cocoa powder on it and then you put a ganache chocolate ganache over the top and then you slice it like a cinnamon roll but i mean if you're making a, a dessert for many people or a dinner party if you have your family and there's a bunch of you all it's a great thing to make because it serves a lot so anyway chocolate roll it might have been called a chocolate roulade but i got the original recipe from uh, Becky Beaton. Becky Beaton uh, is married to a guy from Port Hood and I think she, she might be out in, in uh, Manitoba there. So hi, Becky. And uh, I think she does it at Christmas time and, and decorates it like a Yule log, right? So I have another recipe that I used too um, and, and has kind of a whipped cream center in it. So anyway, whatever you want to put as your filling. But that's what I'm making next week. And Mike Hall, amazing, amazing, amazing fiddler, is going to be here. So we'll have a little bit of uh, company next Sunday. But I really enjoyed our time alone today. It was lovely. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll meet you again next Sunday for tea. So have a wonderful, wonderful week. And a happy back to school to everybody that's going back to school and back to work and all of those things. We're getting back into a schedule. And um, you know, you know that you matter so much to me. And thank you for coming again to have tea with me and have a little visit. I love it. I'm going to try to pile up to Judic right now to go to the Interpretive Center for, for a little bit of the music that's being held there today. Maddie Rankin is playing. This is the end Kitchen Fest, I do believe. And um, love one another. And I love you. And I love you guys. Tammy, Brandon, Margie, Gordy, Kelly, Kristen, Mitchell, and all the grandchildren. And Margie, be careful driving. Okay, I love you all. Bye-bye. Um, hey, hi, it's me, Charlie. Um, if, if, if you, you like, like Grandma's, Grandma's video, video to make sure, sure to, to give it a like and, and subscribe. Give it a like and subscribe.